Denzel White, head of uh, EGU uh, Sports Directors. What is your opinion about this championship here? It's, it's a high level. It's really high level. I think every year we've seen some improvement and um, since we first started this kind of event 10 years ago. And uh, I was particularly pleased to see that Georgia has now started to introduce women's teams. That's a, that's a serious progression. It's serious pro progression because in the past they were never interested. And they cannot, they cannot uh, uh, train with the boys, so it's, it's, it's quite a development. Yeah. They don't in, in a way. Yeah, but I think a lot of countries still have separate training for, for men and women. It's normal. Yeah, but they have such a strong boys, eh? yeah, you would benefit from that as a woman. Well, I think maybe the, the, the difference in the levels, I don't think there'd be any benefit for the women. I think they have to start from uh, wherever they are and just develop gradually and uh, in their own time. But in brief, what you're saying is that we see some smaller countries, Georgia is not a small judo country, but in, in the women's, we see some good developments with smaller countries. Of course, uh, Slovakia is here doing well, Cyprus is represented. I mean, of course, the other thing is we've got more countries participating in this uh, 39. time, yeah, more than ever before. And a record number of, of athletes taking part. It's 485. That's that's really a lot. Around that number, it's really uh, uh, exceptional success for the EJU. But that also s explains the success of the European Cup to under 17. Sure. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of countries realise that this is the age group where they need to start to develop, so that they've got a, a pathway for athletes to come through to the junior and then to senior level. So it's. Uh, you know, it's good experience for them to get a taste of international judo, to, to play judo on the big stage, as it were. And uh, I think it's good. We see a good spread of the medals as well. I remember three years ago, the event was kind of dominated by the big countries. Uh, Russia, three years ago, won five, med five gold medals on the first day. And uh, now you can see from... It's not so strong anymore. Maybe see more, bit more better distribution. I think better distribution, more countries are taking part and taking the event more seriously, and you know maybe they're preparing better for this. Uh, I mean, and I think the other countries, the small countries, perhaps don't have senior athletes, but they do have a lot of kids. So this is their this is their level where they can actually shine. You know, they don't get uh, they don't get many other opportunities to to be the stars, but at this level they could. You're in the board of the EGU, but you have been a former good and successful uh, judoka yourself, did the Olympic Games, you won, won big important uh, uh, medals at World Championships, but uh, do you still feel the vibration because we're in a quite exciting area here in the, in the surrounding of the, of the warm-up area, do you still feel the vibration that the people gone through? Of course, I mean, I, I, I mean we're in the judoka control now and right next to the warming up area and I spent a lot of time down here especially on the first day and the second day and uh, you can feel the, the tension, you can feel the excitement, you can feel the nerves of the athletes and the coaches and it's, it's really great you know, to still uh, to, uh, experience those sort of emotions uh, even though I can't go through myself anymore it's nice to, 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 to be on this side and to see other people going through that too. You've participated, for instance, at the Olympic Games in uh, 1988, uh, but how was that in your time when you were, let's say, 17? There, there was not a European Tour, there was not uh, many tournaments, I think. There weren't as many tournaments. Um, we did have, it was a different uh, setup. We had, es we had Espoirs. This age group was called Espoirs, 16 to 18 years of age. Um, and uh, that was kind of the pinnacle of your career. There were no uh, Cadet World Championships. Uh, they did start junior world championships, but they only happened once every couple of years. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. We've got a, a whole program of events for this age group. You know, they have many, many World Cups. We have the, the ranking system, so we can seed them when they come to this level. I think it's really working very, very well. Thanks, Enzo.